Hello, I'm Paul Sherwin. Last year we brought you the Tour of Italy for the first time and such was your response that this time we've come back to bring you the 77th edition of the Giro d'Italia. The Giro is steeped in legends, Fausto Coppi, Gino Bartoli, they've all written their names along the roads of the Giro d'Italia and created the legends of the tours. This year there are other riders trying to put their names in the history books. Men like Miguel Indurain who became the first Spanish rider to win the Tour of Italy. He will try and go for a third straight win. There is a little bit of suspense around his form though because he's only ridden 20 days of racing so far this year. The season has been dominated by the Italians so maybe the Tour of Italy will go to the home base teams. The Gaywiz Balan team with Moreno Argentine, Giorgio Furlan, Ugrimov and even the young Berzin have totally dominated the start of this year's season. They'll definitely want to conquer the race. Other riders like Gianni Bugno. Bugno is in excellent form this year. He's got rid of all his problems. He won the Tour of Flanders in a fantastic finish with Johan Museo. But the race will start quickly down here in Bologna, the capital of Emilia. We have a short circuit race and the first man over the line will be looking to get the Maglia Rosa. In the afternoon there's a time trial. That's where Maurizio Bondrias beat Miguel Indurain last year and kept the jersey for almost half of the Giro. The action will start quickly so let's go straight down to the racing. And thanks, Paul. And 3,800 kilometres, uh, more or less, is the total distance of the Giro d'Italia. And it's said to be the toughest route for years. And there's the man in the hot seat, the winner for the past two years, Big Mig himself, Miguel Indurain. 153 starters from the 17 teams this morning. And as expected, a day for the sprinters with seven kilometres left to the finish back in Bologna. None of the riders who fancy the chances in the time trial this afternoon are going to waste their energy today. In third place here, his teammates try to bring him up to the line, is the champion of Italy for the second year, Padenzana. And now the team working very hard indeed. This is Lubos Lom, the rider who made his name in this year's Paris-Roubaix, as he now tries to get the Navigar team leader up towards the front of the bunch. There he is, but I think he's come far too early, Padenzana. He's going to bring this race round to the finish in the streets of Bologna and he's going to have to hand it over to the fast men now because that field is still very much all together. And the Lamprey riders taking over the pacemaking with good reason too with Jan Zurada, the great sprinter on this team and also a Giovanni Lombardi who won the points championship on the track in the Olympic Games. And now they're inside the last kilometre and it looks like it's going to be a battle here between the Jolly team and the Mauve jerseys there of Lamprey because their teammates have done a great job to hold them off. In fact, they've gone so quickly, they've split away about a dozen or 15 riders or so here from this front group as they now come up towards the line. Jan Short of Motorola tucked in nicely there, the only US team in the race. And now it's the Lamprey boys who've got the front. Lombardy is in second place. And they look as though they're lining it up for the finish here and the sprint win for Giovanni Lombardi. But watch out because Endrio Leone is coming with a rush in the centre. And Endrio Leone and Lombardi together. Leone gets it on the line. Lombardi second. I think it was Adriano Baffi taking third place. But look at that for a close finish. A battle of the Italians in the opening stage of the Giro d'Italia. The fourth season for Leone. He won the stage this year in the Vuelta d'Espagne. Now he's got the one he wants the opening stage of the Giro d'Italia for him at 25 years of age and the reward will be the first pink jersey of this race. I'm not surprised he's happy. The Italians are always happy when they get success in their own country. He wins in the same time as the rest. Lombardi, Baffi, Baldato, Chiavinia, Fidania in that order as they cross the line. But the big riders not interested at all in that sprint finish because now they face a completely flat time trial. And let's join the race part way through here now. The best time on the board is Bontempi, as you can see, slipping down the list as Baffi starts now to slip through the overall list here. He's rivaling Bontempi's time at the moment. In fact, Berzin is the rider with the best time. And Baffi now going to finish with a very good time for a man who considers himself a pure sprinter. Third best, 23 seconds off the time, already achieved by Evgeny Berzin. In. Unfortunately for us, he was an early starter in the time trial order. This is a flashback. We can show you now the slow motion finish of Evgeny Berzan, who's put in this tremendous ride and really has thrown the gauntlet down. The winner of Liège, Baston Liège this year. And Berzan at 7 minutes 52 as he comes up to the line. A tremendous ride for the 7 kilometres, 7 minutes 54.5.
Now this is Moreno Argentina, the gay vis team, and I must say, uh, now completing his 14th season as a professional and riding better than ever, although certainly he will retire at the end of the year. Sixth in the Giro last year, and finally got the leader of the event too. Now racing for a potential lead again here, but he's going to have to take on his much younger teammate Berzin because Berzin has put in a tremendous time of 7 minutes and 54 seconds in the time trial. He's the best time on the board at the moment. This looks like Gianni Bugno coming through towards the finish. Sporting the latest style in low profile bicycles. Here's Argentin and a good time on the board, but he's already falling behind the time of Berzin. And he's going outside, a good ride there by Andrea Kirato, who rode so well to finish fourth in this year's Tour du Pont. He really does feel that he's found himself this season. But Argentin is going to be faster than Kirato. He goes second best, eight minutes and nine seconds. The start of a big MIG himself, Miguel Indurain, the man who is the master of the time trials. And now is he going to give us some indication that he's come here now aiming seriously to win the Tour for the third year in succession. Gianni Bugno, he'll either surprise or he'll disappoint in a big way. A little bit of wheel spin here as he bounces over the cobbles in the centre of Bologna. But Bugno giving it everything and in determined moves he comes up to the line. But his time is indicating to us it's down. And in fact, 8 minutes 6 seconds for Bugno. Slightly off the pace being set at the moment by Evgeny Berzin. This is Injurain. And there is talk around the course that Injurain is also down on Berzin. This is the situation at the moment. Berzin leads from Francesco Casagrande. Bugno is in third place. And Moreno Argentine is in fourth. Tilly Marie, the prologue specialist, is lying fifth. Now, can this man upset the apple cart? Armand de las Cuevas, who used to be a teammate of Miguel Injurain, now rides with Cyril Guimar and the Castorama team. He can produce some excellent time trial rides, the winner of the Grand Prix des Nations and a vastly, vastly underrated performer. So Armand de las Cuevas starts now, happy he's back on the French team. In fact, Guimar rescuing him somewhat uh, from Bonesto and giving him the chance of a ride. And now it looks as though Armand de las Cuevas is also riding on top form. It's a difficult twisting course, this is Pancake Flat as Armand de las Cuevas heads up towards the finish. Argentine, by the way, is in with third place, but also in now is Indurain. His time was slower than Berzan, 7 minutes 57 seconds. De las Cuevas comes in and that's the best time. 7 minutes 52 seconds for De las Cuevas. Berzan gets second and surprise, surprise, Miguel Indurain is beaten over this short distance by 5 seconds and by a teammate, an ex-teammate at that as well. And so the new leader of the Giro at the end of the first full day, Armand de las Cuevas, is now pulling on his first leader's jersey of a big tour. Now he's going to have to hang on to it over 232 kilometers on this second stage, which starts his journey now down the Adriatic coast from Bologna on to Osimo. And I'll tell you, if you ever get the chance to come over to Italy for either a holiday or indeed with your bicycle for a nice ride, well, you will enjoy the scenery tremendously and the weather too is usually kind in the summer. And no real big challenge on the road today until we get down towards the finish and then it gets a little bit ripply for the field. And this is Raul Alcala. Had a great season last season, moved over to Motorola this year and found he was... Uh, on the defensive in the Tour du Pont in favour of team captain Lance Armstrong over there in the United States. And the rider coming up alongside him there, Leonardo Sierra from Venezuela. So I guess Raul and Leonardo will be able to speak in the same tongue. Well, this is an attack here now from Michele Coppolio. And the Navigar team, particularly active in the early stages of this year's Giro d'Italia. And he's gone very early. There was a few little hills coming towards the finish today down in Osimo. And so he may feel the time is right for a gamble. He's certainly giving it a good go, and he's got a nice lead over the field, but somebody's got off the front of that bunch there. Very pleasant, warm day as well, but these are the climbs now which are going to hurt those legs. You make the big effort to get clear, and then the legs start to complain. And judging by the way, Coppolio is looking over his shoulder here. He has a great feeling that the bunch are coming back, and in fact, they're being led by Injurain's Bernesto squad, surprisingly. No sign of the Castorama team here trying to defend that narrow lead of Armand de las Cuevas and that gap of nine seconds. A little bit inopportune there because, as you can see, 
The field has closed right in on Coppelio, who is not a bad mountain climber, by the way. And so, the big peloton, sensing perhaps that they might have a chance yet to bring the sprinters to the fore, but there is a climb into the town of Osimo that should end all hopes of that happening today. It's not the sort of finish you'd expect Andrea Leone to be taking the stage. So Bernesto keeping this field together now. On the right of the picture there, we've got Peter Ugamov, an attack by Podenzano, the champion of Italy again. Robbed of the first chance to wear the Maglia Rosa on the opening morning. He's now going to have another go to try and pull it on at the end of day two. But again, judging by his face, that he's made the move, but the pressure is on. And this is, in fact, it's Ugamov who's decided to come away from the field who rode so well last year in the Giro d'Italia. He was the man that gave Miguel Injuena a run for his money, finished less than a minute behind him overall. Said to have prepared especially for this race. Well, the Gavis team have had a tremendous season so far. And everything from now on surely has got to be a bonus because they really have been the team of the early classics. Strong counter-attack, and this is still Ugamov trying to get clear as we head now into the town of Osimo. And the crowd all standing on the right of the road there because of the wide left-hand bend to get the best view of the Giro d'Italia arriving here. But look at this now, David Rebelin, once a great amateur rider for Italy, now coming up. He was the rider that just got off the front of the group. There's nothing in it here, the whole field are chasing them down. But again, uh, such a small lead for De Las Cuevas, the man who wins the stage could well be the new race leader. And that man looks like being Peter Ugamov at the moment as he gives it everything up the climb. Rebelan is falling back, but Argentina has come up right through the field and is going up to his teammate. Look at this. Moreno Argentine goes smoothly over the top of Ugamov. Ugamov was fading, so he can't be too unhappy about that. Argentine now trying to ride on the loan. He's absolutely flying up this climb. He's being chased there by Andrea Ferragato. And just look at the way Argentina has got the bit between the teeth now. Over the brow of the hill, Moreno Argentine will take the stage for sure. And I think he's got enough cap also to take the Maglia Rosa. And what a great start to the Giro d'Italia, just like he did a year ago. Moreno Argentine scorching away now. The familiar colours are blue and white of Gavis winning another big race and this time the stage in the Gilles d'Italia. Six hours and 13 minutes for Moreno Argin. Ferragato comes over in second. Rebelan hangs on there for third. And in the sprint here, that is Casa Grande who leads over a small group. The pink jersey of De Las Cuevas just detached off the back there. But Moreno Argentini may be retiring by the end of the year, but the former world champion is having a great start to this year's Giro d'Italia. And lucky 13, two for Moreno Argent, that's how many stages he's won of the Giro d'Italia. And in fact, overall, you can see the rider who took fifth place was Pascal Richard, Giorgio Ferlin was sixth. So now the race on stage three, 185 kilometers, continuing our journey down the side of the leg of Italy, on the Adriatic side, that is, between Osimo, Laveto, Aprutino. And now the Gavis team has got themselves the overall lead, and there he is, Moreno Argentin, in the pink, as he was indeed at this stage of the race one year ago. Good tempo once more being kept up here. Now Argentin taking on a different role now rather than attacking. He's just watching all of the moves. Well, sorry about the little bit of picture breakup, but I hope you'll understand these pictures being linked again from the motorbikes up to our helicopter. As we now see the Palti team beginning to stretch the legs, and this looks like Gianni Bugno on the attack. And the crowd are naming for us. They shout to him six in the overall classification, 21 seconds off that pink jersey. And there's no doubt that Bunyo would like to take that lead now and prove once more to the Italian Tufosi he really has good form. There's a lot of pressure being applied at the front of the race today. Long, thin lines of riders. Just look how the peloton has split up. And that's a tremendous shot from our helicopters. We see now the race in very angry mood. Bunyo again is trying to get something moving on the left of our picture. The Lamprey riders are massing at the front. Not too many signs of the gay Vis team here blocking for Argentin. Bunyo knows a small time bonus and a little bit, a uh, couple of hundred meters perhaps ahead of the pack will be good enough to take the pink jersey. 
tremendous Tour of Flanders by Bugno this year. The Italians very rarely win that great classic and he did it in marvellous style. He used his teammate Andrea Perron to soften up the leading breakaway, sent him off up the road. When he got caught, Bugno started the final group of four, which decided the race and he finished it off in the sprint. And now, over the top of this small climb, Bugno still trying to get the lead and the crowd are loving it. Well, we often read in the press how the people don't like Bugno, but you know, it's never apparent when you see him on the bike in front of his home crowd. This is Argentin. It looks as though he's being forced to make some of the counter moves himself now. And when you're in the pink, I suppose you have to do a lot of the work, but he's looking around to see the left. Looks like Kierpucci going up the inside. Well, I was about to say, he'd expect to see some help coming in from teammates. Well, there, in fact, is Evgeny Berza. He's going through to try and give a hand to Argentine in the chase back now of Bunyo. So, a little bit of alarm now, but it's all too late because Bunyo's in the home straight. He's not very far ahead of the field. In fact, there they come right up behind him. Looks like Miguel Ingerain is leading the charge now. But the chase down is coming too late, I think. Bunyo is going to hang on because he comes around the corner. He'll see the finish. I have to say that's an amazing place to put a finishing line just off the bend. But Bunyo gets it on the line. And Zanini was the rider who came over. And I made the gap around about two seconds. This is the finish again now. A little look over his shoulder to make sure all was well. And Gianni Bunyo, maybe he didn't get the lead he wanted, but he certainly got the stage win. So the victory for Gianni Bugno, two seconds ahead of Zanini, Rebelin, Casagrande, Ingerain finally getting fifth, and Berzan taking sixth place. Well, Bugno on the winner's podium again, and having something of a revitalised season this year, but it didn't damage the overall lead. That's still on the shoulders of Moreno Argentin. He now leads by seven seconds ahead of Bugno, nine seconds ahead of teammate Berzan, and De Las Cuevas is down in fourth place. Ingerain in fifth. So to the fourth stage, 204 kilometres, taking us now from Monte Silvano to Capitello Monteresa. And this, our first mountain top finish of this year's tour. There are four of them, by the way. And this, the first one, if you like, the easiest of the quartet. So a big test day then for Moreno Argentin. Alvaro Mejia on the far side for Motorola, Podenzana right out on the barriers there, the champion. And just come into our picture here, we have Guido Bontempi. I think has won more stage of the Giro d'Italia than virtually anybody else. Currently riding, that is. Two minutes, five seconds is the gap on this leading group. It's forced its, stay, it's forced its way ahead, but there's been a few breakaways today. And this looks like Pellaccioli here. Oscar Pellaccioli established himself in this year's Tour de Pont, where he won the King of the Mountains title but there's a lot of hesitation going on here. This gap is out to two minutes, but the chase back is on. Oscar Pelliccioli found his form in the United States and has put it to good use now in this breakaway. It's an early move and it's going to see if he can get away 14, 15 kilometers to go down to the finish. Andrea Felegato has had one good placing already. And now in with a chance of a real good placing here because he's in the breakaway. Long turns being done. Yet another very, very pleasant and warm day. We're turning slightly inland now as we go away from the Adriatic coast. Continue our journey south. Fabio Fontanelli. When he comes down to a sprint finish, I would think that Fontanelli will finish it off very nicely. And there's the profile, and I would think Fontanelli not too happy with the way that road kicks up towards the finish. That's Fontanelli at the back of the group. The Castorama rider in here, by the way, is Thierry Bourguignon. Hasn't really come through as a top rider like everybody expected. And the field, in fact, have wiped them out as they start the climb. About 11 kilometres from the summit now, they've all been brought back. And this is Pascal Richard, who's now trying to go away at the 10 kilometre point. And I must say, he's had a tremendous season this year. And this is a long climb to the summit and coming away from the main field too, Claudio Chiapucci. And one must ask the question, will he ever win a big tour? He searches every year, but he always finds somebody in his way. 
And that's Pelliccioli coming up uh, behind him as well. So the main field having their rush for the summit here as they crack the big bunch. And now Pelliccioli is deciding it's time to go alone. Oscar Pelliccioli looking round the corner there. This climb takes us up to almost 1,500 metres. And it should stay sunny all the way up to. Oscar Pelliccioli, he looks like a climber, doesn't he? Very neat little rider, pedals the low gears. And there's trouble down the slopes from Moreno Argentini. He's trying to get away, but you know he's not got the rhythm of Pelliccioli at all. Very select little group there, and from that group, which I saw contained in Jirain, Berzan has jumped away. So Evgeny Berzan is now trying to reach Pelliccioli as the pace quickens and the mountain gets that little bit steeper. Well, this is a rider who is really bursting with confidence this year. One tour of the Apennines. He's won a lot more than that, I can tell you. As he now tries to reach Pelliccioli four kilometres from the summit. It's an extremely fast climb, this very good road service. Little bit of trouble for Moreno Argentin. He's tried to defend that pink jersey, but he may take some consolation from the fact that his teammate is lying second on the course right now, trying to contact Pelliccioli, and there he goes. And he looks as though he's absolutely flying up the mountainside here. They're only about 10 seconds ahead of the main group, which is at the head of the group containing Injurain, but there we are. Pelliccioli looks over his shoulder, and he'll see Evgeny Berzan has caught him. He eases immediately to let Berzan come through and do the pacemaking. He knows the reputation this young Russian has built for himself this year. It all started when he finished second overall in the Tour of the Mediterranean way back in February. And since then, he's hardly put a wheel wrong. Third in flesh well on, winner of Liège, Baston Liège. And now, is he going to have to concede to Pelliccioli because Evgeny is looking for time? And Pelliccioli wants the stage win, but now Berzan's going to give him a run for the line here. Pelliccioli comes as well on the right and he takes him on and I think he feels he's got it but he hasn't. Berzin has taken it, Pelliccioli in second place and I think the time will give the lead there now because that was Vladimir Belli who's come over third, 17 seconds down. This is the sprint and sprint is Rebelan with Pantani on his wheel but Rebelan is going to take this sprint for fourth place. And they are 47 seconds down, so the lead will swing certainly across to Evgeny Berzin. This is Alvaro Mejia. There's the pink jersey of Moreno Argentin. He didn't hold it for long this time, not like he did last year, when it passed to Injurain. And then over the line. So indeed, the pink jersey swings from Argentin across to his Gavis teammate, Evgeny Berzin. Berzan taking the stage, same time as Pelliccioli, Belli, Rebelin and Pantani in fifth place. So the race moves on, stage five at Campo Basso. We come down the mountain now to restart, heading out 158 kilometres today to Melfi. And the stage itself, uh, as you can see, just one little lump out there in the middle, taking the riders up to almost 800 metres. It shouldn't be too much of a concern, and that's the way it has proved. 10 kilometres to go, and the Palti boys are now thinking that maybe they will be able to pull their man, Jamaluddin Abdu Japarov. We haven't seen a thing of him yet to the front of this bunch and get them back in with a stage win. The new leader, Berzan, riding on the wheel there of Miguel Injurain, and there he is, setting the pace now. And in fact, Injurain looking over his shoulder and calling through the Maglia Rosa and actually shouting at him. So perhaps he's trying to psychologically start working now on the young Russian who dared to beat him in the time trial and now lead this race. Yanni Bunyo, who's had one stage win but hasn't had the pink jersey on his shoulders. So really the big heads of state today are throwing the weight behind this breakaway. I think they may well have a split on here with the main field I don't see any other reason for such strong men. You can see that they've got this very strong crosswind blowing today, which is coming from their right shoulder. And if you keep the pressure high, you might well crack. And you can see the split forming down the back end of the field there. And that's what they're working to get to try and break up this big field. 
Well, there's not going to be any real time gain because they're approaching the finish here. You can see the wind blowing the paper around in the streets here as we approach Melfi finish. But again, it is going to be a battle of the sprinters, or is it? Because the counter-attacks have started immediately now. Bunyo still trying to hold the centre field of that peloton. But now they're dashing over to catch wheels on the left of the road. The peloton moves across. This is when it gets a little bit dangerous indeed. And surprisingly, Miguel Injuane himself in third position, trying to grab the wheel there of Uwe Rob, is taking part in the sprint for the time bonuses, but now the big sprinters are coming. And we've got Baldato trying to go, and Injuane is taking him on. Leone's coming very quickly as they hit the line. That was really close, but it could have been Leone. It could have been Baldato. Let's have a look again. Leone is the rider in the yellow jersey, taking on the Fabio Baldato. Lombardi is the rider in third place. Injurane falls back. My goodness me, that is close. Both riders feel they've won it. And in fact, one of the riders, I think it's Abdu Japarov there, has found his wheel jammed up with paper. And judging by the disgust there, as he slams it on the road, I think he might have felt he was in with a chance. But it was a close finish indeed. And Leone lifts his front wheel off the ground. And the photo finish has said it was his victory. So a second stage win for Endrio Leone. Baldato second. Miguel Indurain, interestingly, contesting the sprint and finishing fifth. On to the sixth stage now, 215 kilometers from Pontenza to Caserta and the roads are getting a little bit more ripply now as the riders start to move across land. We now head the furthest point south of this year's Giro d'Italia and this breakaway has established itself over the ripples of the hills down in the south. Well in this breakaway we've got Massimo Girotto he always stands out, he's the rider up in third place at the moment, looking here at the rider Heinz Imboden from Switzerland and also in this breakaway group we've got Gianni Fadazin and Marco Salagari. And this is Massimo Girotto and the breakaway, 4 minutes 18 seconds, well the main field deciding that this uh, containing nobody who will endanger the pink jersey of Evgeny Beza so none of Berzan's team are prepared to take them on with 30 kilometers still to go. Ivan Gotti from the Palti team going through in second place. And uh, he knows that he has a very strong team behind him to try and slow down the attack, Poddensana. Back in the main field, the champion of Italy. A little bit of movement now as the race comes into the final kilometers to try and reduce that gap as reduced they surely will, but there you can see Berza and he really is showing no great interest in organising a counter chase. So, a chance for the opportunist today, a first big breakaway of this year's Giro d'Italia, seven kilometres from the finish at Madaloni, and setting the pace, Marco Saligari. And Heinz Imboden, quite prepared to work. The Palti boys try to slow it down in the yellowish jerseys down there. Berzan keeping out of trouble, but always riding at or near the front. Massimo Girotto, one of Italy's great strong men. One day he'll land a really big win. He's had stage wins before. A couple of stage wins in the Tour de France as well. I remember him winning on his own in Geneva once, but an attack has gone now from the Lamprey rider. So the breakaway trying to be split up here. There's Gianni Falazan who's gone. And being chased immediately by Gotti, but that's the signal for everybody to ride them down. Imboden at the back, Saligari in front of him, and Girotto, the first rider to reach uh, Gotti. Well, they've not quite reached him yet. There's still about 10, 15 metres between them. Gotti's just taking a look over his shoulder, but they're closing down. This is the man that caused all of the problems, Gianni Falazan. He's gone early, he hasn't had any confidence in a sprint finish. And he's lining up now for the kilometre to go, and they're all looking at him, but can they get to him now? This has been a good move here by Gianni Falazan. There's still a more than three minutes in hand for this breakaway as they approach the line. Girotto wants a little bit more help. Falazan is now back in the pack in fourth place, and it's going to come down to a sprint finish. Gotti, the man at the back of the group, and they're leaving Girotto to start the sprint. Now Saligari is going to go. Saligari goes, looks both ways first. He must feel pretty confident as Marco Saligari eats them alive in the sprint. 
He gets in, and uh, between Imboden and Girotto, he looked like Girotto gets second. This is the race from the main field, and this is Gianluca Pierabon just holding them off for sixth place. And safely home is Berzin, and he will retain his overall lead. There's the result, though. Salagari ahead of Girotto and Imboda, and Abdu Japarov sharpening his leg, second in the big bunch sprint for seventh. And so the surprise continues in this year's Giro d'Italia and on top still in the leader's pink jerseys we head off now onto the seventh stage of 119 kilometres is Evgeny Berzin. This is a circuit based here on Fuji and it's an undulating circuit which will provide the attackers with plenty of opportunity if they want to have a go. But as so often is the case in these early days of the Giro d'Italia, the riders shadow box each other, the sprinters often have their chance. And don't forget that Evgeny Berzin, he's never been in this position before of having to defend a lead in a race of this quality. Now it's a case of seeing what comes out of it. This is Roberto Conti here, a rider who's never won a race as a professional, by the way, yet he's been one of the most established pro bike riders there is. And Cubino is the rider who forced the attack. He did it going downhill, and now he's trying to hang on to it going uphill, which is something of a surprise because Lordolino Cubino, back from injury, is in fact a climber by nature. Won a stage of the Tour de France once at Luz Ardiden in the Pyrenees, just over the Spanish borders, and he's gone away in beautifully warm, sunny weather. They're trying to organize a little bit of a chase back now. The rider is now beginning the return as they head up now before the long transfer which will take them right the way up towards the top of Italy again. And then of course you can get a change in the weather because down here on the leg of Italy we're on the, the Tyrrhenian seaside of the leg of Italy now where the weather is pretty much guaranteed to be very hot and very pleasant indeed. Coming up to this chase group now, little group of riders. This is uh, Fabian Yekar from Castorama who's got across. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six riders in this breakaway. And remember that Cubino has slipped them. And I don't think at this stage of the race they're going to catch him, but they're right on him. My goodness me, they're right on him. It's going to be desperately close, but Cubino, I think, will hang on. Well, the chase has been tremendously successful, but I think they're going to fail on the line because this is a great consolation for the man who had to pull out of the Tour of Spain, and he wins it. But there can't be more than a second in it there, and that was Coppolini who came over in second place, and I think it was Yeka who got third. The main field not giving them much leeway at all. Berzan conceding about 10 seconds of his overall lead, but not to a man he will consider a long-term contender because he can't ride the time trials as well as Berzin can. That's the result. Coppolillo, Yeka, Bordelali, Pelliccioli there again, and Chirato, and Bartoli brought over the main field. Overall, Berzan leads Bugno by 57 seconds. De Las Cuevas, a nice round minute back, and last year's winner, Miguel Indurain, for the last two years, a minute and five seconds back. Interesting to note, too, there are five Italians there in the top eight overall. And so we move on now to stage number eight and the crucial day, the time trial. That's why the riders tried to hold it together yesterday. It's 44 kilometers, Grassetto, Folonica. And it is nothing really untoward as far as terrain goes, but it's a chance now for Miguel Indurain to prove that he really is the man to beat in this year's race. He's nibbled away at the time bonuses in an attempt to stay in this, and now he normally doesn't do that. And he starts wearing number one as winner of this race for the last two years. And look at that average speed straight out of the blocks, 50, 52 kilometers an hour. Armand de las Cuevas, the man who surprised in the opening time trial over seven kilometers, now facing a lot further than that. Well, surprisingly enough, Indurain having to start now ahead of the race leader. This is the situation thus far. Lely is home and dry with 53 minutes and 25 seconds. Ugramov at 9 seconds. Argentin at 40 seconds. But the leaders of the race are still to finish. And here comes the big surprise because the Latvian Ugramov has got the best time at this checkpoint, 27 minutes and 2 seconds. De Las Cuevas is approaching that now and is clearly much, much faster. 
Back to the start house, Jenny Bunyo, second overall, 57 seconds off the race leader's jersey. And you see, this popular man, the lower press here in Italy would have you think otherwise, is cheered away by the crowd. One, one, two. So Gianni Bugno would love now to deliver the goods for the home to Fossi. Miguel Injurain would like to prove that he is still very much in the hunt for a third successive Giro d'Italia as we now see the arrival of Bugno at this checkpoint. The first checkpoint, he's 17 seconds slower now than De Las Cuevas. This is not a good start for Gianni Bugno. As out of the start blocks goes the last man of the original field of 153, Evgeny Berza. And our picture now indicating it's a head-to-head -head battle with the champion of the time trial on our left, Miguel Injurain, and the usurper from Russia, who has been a champion of the pursuit over 4,000 metres, Evgeny Berzan. And the checkpoints are indicating that Berzan is slightly ahead of Injurain. Well, that will be a surprise now if, in fact, Berzin can confirm what he started out by doing in the seven-kilometre time trial right at the beginning of this tour a week ago. Armand de las Cuevas also seemingly ahead on the road of Injurain. Now, there's the time of de las Cuevas through the checkpoint. Berzin is bringing up the rear of the race here. Heading up towards this checkpoint, he is ahead very much so of De Las Cuevas and gets the best time at the check. 1 minute 14.5 seconds, so he leads this race completely now on the road. Well, Evgeny Berzan is already now proving he is super fast as we see the arrival of Injurain. The best time, surprisingly, is Lely. 53 minutes, 25.8 seconds. Now, Injure normally would hammer Lely out of sight. He's only just going to scrape inside. If indeed he does scrape inside, he does, but only by five seconds. That is incredible. Injure is not firing. So Injure the best time home, but all the indicators are he won't be best time by the end of this stage. And this is the first man who's going to knock him off the top of the pile. Armand de las Cuevas. I said earlier, once his teammate, and now he's really come into his own as a time trialist. He won the Grand Prix de Nacion de las Cuevas, now confirming himself as a great man in the moment of truth. And a, this is really a severe beating of Miguel Injurain. One minute, eight seconds, 18 seconds faster. And now we have just Bruno and Berzan to finish. Well, this is turning out to be absolutely amazing. These two are locked together, but Berzan is the man who is eating into everybody's lead. And Gianni Bunya now is a very tricky finish here. They come through the S's before they line up to the finish. If you overcook it, you lose time. Even worse, you could clout the barrier. And Bunyo having to slow down in the S's, but look at the time. He's now aiming at Injurain's time. He's slower than De Las Cuevas, but this is going to be an amazing beating for Injurain as well because Bunyo once lost three minutes to Injurain in a Tour de France time trial. He's going to beat Injurain now by almost a minute here as he comes up to the line. And this will be a tremendous feather in the cap of the Italian. He'll push Injurain down into only third place. 52 minutes, 27.6 seconds. And now there's only one rider left to finish Berzan and all the indications throughout this ride is he is going to annihilate not just Miguel Injurain, but the rest of the contenders as well. Now Berzan is building himself a big lead to take into the mountains and remember the last two weeks of this race are very very difficult but Berzan has no thought of that now as he approaches the line. Look at the time of De Las Cuevas, look at the time of Berzan. He's going to make big gains over all of them here now as he sprints for the line. This is going to be a tremendous beating of De Las Cuevas, one of the best time trialists in the world. He hits the line, 1 minute 15.5 seconds, his gain over De Las Cuevas. He also becomes the man to beat Miguel Injurain in a big way, in a major time trial, in a major tour. We haven't seen that since about 1991. And just look at the result now, a minute 16 over De Las Cuevas with 2 minutes 34 seconds over Miguel Injurain. So, Evgeny Berzan is now going to start thinking of a long-term leadership of this race now. And why shouldn't he, with a lead overall over De Las Cuevas of 2 minutes and 16 seconds, over Gianni Bugno, 2.38, Injurain, 3.39, Marco Giovanetti, 4.20.
And so the race moves on, the 153 kilometers today, the ninth stage from Castiglione to Della Pascea Pondera. And Rolf Sorensen here, we haven't seen too much of him yet in this race, but he's coming back to form. Having to now work his way back in, he too having had injury, but the field hardly an attack all day. And the riders now beginning to think of a sprint finish once more. And Leone no doubt thinking of a third stage win as well. Well, the sun stays with us. Uh, this small group has a lead of just 13 seconds, but the field have watched them escape and they might well bring them back before the finish. Sorensen is leading among others here. Bjarni Rees and Michele Bartoli. Max Chandri is in here too. Ex-Motorola, now on the GBMG team. And signaling here, number 116, is Eros Poli. No doubt the tallest man in the race. He's about six foot two, two or three inches tall. Former Olympic champion in the team time trial. I saw him first as an amateur ride in the 1988 Tour of Australia. Well, they've all come back together now. Girotto at the front there, but he'd be wiped away in this sort of company, I think, as the sprinters again will sharpen their legs. And watch out now, because the Jolly Boys are trying to get up there for Enrico and Leone once more to try and land the big sprint finish. Oh, there's a terrible pile up on the corner there as they swung round. Well, I don't know who caused that, but they took it wide, and Jan Zorada is going clear here. Leone's alongside him. Little bit of a melee as we look down to the finishing line, but it's tucked away on the left of our pictures. Zorada gets the stage win. Leone was just in the sprint there with Giovanni for Danza for third place. But just look at the bike here, because that's the bike of Eric van der Aarde, and there he is. As he reclaims it, well, that was the first time we've seen van der Aarde uh, try to contest the sprint. Let's watch it again now. Watch the left of your picture. Van der Aarde actually brushed off the shoulders. In fact, the rider that went down there was a GB, a ZG rather, and he, <laughs> one or two fell down in sympathy before the pileup really did get underway. Well, luckily, nobody hurt. A spectacular picture is made, though. And again, two of the best sprinters in this race have taken the day's finish. Watch that as they go down. That's van der Aarde, who's catapulted into the barriers, and one or two did pile in. Well, that really is a demonstration of a mass pileup. I've never quite seen one like that before. Zorada won the stage, though, ahead of Leone for Danza in third place, and Shaw taking fourth place for Motorola, Uvarab in fifth. So, Zorada scores his first win of the Giro d'Italia, the Slovakian rider. Overall, no change at all today. De Las Cuevas, Bugno, Indra, and Giovanetti, and Pavel Tonkov, another Russian rider there, in eighth. So the race now moving on as we head on, Marostica, it's a circuit race again and it's 115 kilometres. Not too long for the riders today as they now begin to move across the top of the leg of Italy and heading over now to the northeast corner of the country. Creeping a little bit closer to Slovenia where the race will make its entry and then move across back into Austria before it re-enters Italy. Gianni Bugno. He's been in and out uh, of the race contention and he's still very much in contention now as he lies in third place overall, 2 minutes 38 seconds off the lead. Everybody must be wondering now just how good is Miguel Ingerain this year. There's been a number of breakaways today, but nobody holding on. And these long straight roads are not conducive to get off the front, of course. The peloton riding at full speed is going to also stop the attack, but this little group is trying to get away. Now the remnants of a group of some 12 that got away, in fact, so there are still seven of them left. And really, there's no cohesion at all in this breakaway, and they know the main field is right behind them, so they can't make up their minds now, and the Pulte team are chasing, so they may feel they can get Abdu Japarov into the action. There's the breakaway just up the road, and there's a lot, oh, and there's a crash. There's a crash, now it must have happened near the back of the field. And indeed, there's a Motorola rider on the floor there who doesn't look at all well right now. But there's a lot of riders come down on what seems to be a, a, just a, a straight piece of road. I don't know why they would have fallen there. Lack of attention, maybe, in these closing kilometers. But the Motorola rider, I think, is Jan Schur, the former East German, who was a brilliant team time trial rider. And he turned pro in 1989 when East Germany was uh, showing signs of cracking up and becoming just Germany. And let's have a look. Oh dear me, you saw Shaw go there. It was almost as if he saw the crash happening, slammed his front brake on and went clean over the handlebars. 
because initially it wasn't the crash. Now there is Michel Dernis, who has stopped by, the faithful teammate in the Motorola team, former winner of the Kellogg's Tour of Britain. That's probably his biggest ever win, but ideally suited as a domestic. Let's have a look now at the crash here again. As our helicopter moves along, you'll come across there, sure there. And watch him as he seems to slam his front brake on and just goes over the top because he must have seen the crash happening on the front right of the road to him. Well, there's Michel Dernis taking a good close look at him, trying to keep him on the bike and in contention, but that's a nasty, stunning knock he's taken there. But the race is going on at the front now. The sprinters have the tails up. They can smell the finish. They will have heard the tinkling of metal at the back, but they won't have bothered to have looked round. Two kilometres to go to the finish now, and the Palti boys continue to make the pace, but watch out for Lamprey. Lamprey have uh, got their tails up as well now because they've had one good win with Jan Zverada. And they're into the final kilometre. And remember, the flat stage is running out for the sprinters because we'll shortly be heading for the Dolomites and the Alps, which will end this tour with a tremendous last couple of weeks. So the sprinters, and that's a dash up on the outside. It looks like the big hair of, in fact, Mario Chiesa, the Carrera rider, who you often see attacked but virtually never gets the victories. But he is never shy to work, and Chiesa's gone to the front with about 500 metres to go. He's got Bunyu right on his back wheel there for Palti. Jamaldin Abdu Japarov is the rider in that blue jersey, tucked away to the left, still using his teammates to the last as Chiesa now starts his run for the line. And Chiesa's may have the gap here that will finally give him the victory that he so often deserves but never gets. He's still got the gap, and in fact, the spint has pulled away a group here. Chiesa now can see the finishing line. Abdu Jafarov is waiting as long as possible. He looks over his shoulder, sees Baldato go. Baldato is in the white and blue for GB. It's Baldato and Abdu Jafarov now going for the line. As they come out of the line, Lombardi is also in on the sprint at the very end. But Abdu Jafarov has got the stage victory he wanted. So now he's going to feel like a sprinter again. He measured this one to perfection. And on the line, it looks as though Lombardi gets second place and Baldato will take third in a very, very good sprint finish. My goodness me, Giovanni Lombardi is developing well in this year's Giro d'Italia as a sprinter. He was, of course, a great track rider and used that sprint a lot uh, in points racing, particularly on the track as an amateur. But there he is, Jamaluddin yeah. Abdu Japarov and receives the congratulation of the riders here as he finally gets a sprint victory and it's taken him only 10 days. Ahead of Lombardi, Baldato, Panyin, Ferregato, Sorensen, Chiesa getting seven. He hung on for a prize at least and Coccioli in eighth. No change at all overall as Evgeny Berzan retains his advantage over De Las Cuevas and Bugno as the race now heads on to the 11th stage from Marostica to Bibioni. 165 kilometers. Now you can't get it much flatter than that. We'll even start by going downhill as well. A beautiful resort and extremely hot and of course a day for the sprinters. And Bunyo has worked hard to keep this race together because he's now hoping that in fact Abdu Japarov will do it all again and win the sprint. Just four kilometers left of the day. It's been a very, very quiet day indeed. And tomorrow the race will go off into Slovenia. And that's a long day of 204 kilometres, so they haven't wanted to put themselves out. The sprinters are going to cross swords again in the big sprint finish, and Max Chandri has got the head of the race this time. What a great race it's been for the sprinters so far. Chandri now up to the front, and there comes Abdu Japarov on the right of our picture trying to go on, and it's a terrific battle now, and it's a clash. Asleone has gone down. Asleone has gone down, and as it, across the line comes Jan Zarada in the crash there. But Leone was the rider who appeared to, uh, to me to ride straight into the shoulder of Jamaluddin Abdu Japarov. Now, we often blame Jamaluddin Abdu Japarov uh, for the crashes, but there's no way he can be responsible for that one. He rode a perfectly straight line. He didn't move when he was hit by Leone, and Leone, a double stage winner so far, is now down and not looking at all clever, and I think bound for the hospital here. Well, that really is extremely sad. The other rider's gone down with him, by the way, Roberto Pagni. Now, watch this, because the man in the blue is Abdu Japarov. Now, look at that. Abdu didn't move an inch, and that's what happens when you don't move. And it was a nasty fall there by Enrico Leone. The other rider falling just behind him was indeed Roberto Pagni. 
and giving a clear run at the line for Jan Zverada. Abdu getting second place. Uwe Raab is best placed so far. Third, Shandri fourth. And what a shame for the other two top sprinters. But Jan Zverada stacking up the stage wins now. He has two along with Leone. Now, if anybody's in this area, you must uh, always pay a visit to the beautiful aquatic city of Venice, which is only about 30 or 40 miles away from Bibioni. Well, the riders won't see Venice, but I'll tell you what, we can. A little word of warning too, because I was here during the World Cycle Cross Championships a couple of years ago. Make sure you park your car only in official car parks and not were invited to do so by the, uh, well, we'll call them gangsters at the entry into the city because you'll find they'll guide you to a boat and they'll charge you an awful lot of money when you come to step off it in the city itself. So make sure you use the official transport and not the fly-by-nights. I thought you might like to know that, but uh, this is the sort of traffic jam you can experience in the beautiful city, and it is just that. The best way to see is by gondola. Well, the race itself hasn't had the privilege of visiting uh, the water city of Venice, so the race now preparing for the long ride of 204 kilometers into Kranch, which is across the border in Slovenia, that country which has uh, been worn torn in the Civil War. Across the border and the ride today taking them away from Bibioni, and they covered the first hour of racing today of 45 kilometers an hour and if they've kept up that sort of pace and that is why there's been no breakaway at all they've tried we've had two breaks of five riders go clear including at one time Pantani who has been in both breakaways trying to establish something but they've all failed and now as you can see once more the Palti boys have got this race under control and clearly taking confidence once more in Abdu Japrov he's in the blue jersey and you can see him being brought to the finish here in about fifth or sixth place. So Abdu Jafarov is now moving back into top sprinting form here and the Palti boys, once they know their sprinter has hit form, have also taken great confidence. They're off on the circuit now, five kilometres back to the line and everybody watching the move of the rider in blue. Massimo Gelotto is on his shoulder there. As they come into this final kilometre now, now, can uh, Abdu Jafarov keep out the way of any last-minute crashes this time as they line up for the finish? Well, Palti won't control this much longer now as they swing into this little climb before they go across the line. That might be just enough to hurt the legs of the sprinters as they come towards the line. Uh, Bunyo is now going to move out of the way. And that was Perini, I think, who moved across the right of our picture. Here comes Baldata with the dark glasses on. He's fourth or fifth down the line there. And he's looking for the win, he's been denied so far. Abdu Jafarov's got himself into second place. I think that's Feregato who's gone early, right round the barriers. And he's holding the inside lane now as Feregato comes clear. Baldato chases him and Abdu might have made a mistake here. Abdu's gone very late in third place. And there's an awful big gap there for a sprinter to close. And it's going to be Baldato on the right taking on Feregato. Maybe Baldato's got it at last. But on the line, Baldato is beaten by Andrea Feregato. And just look at this, Andrea Ferragato gets the victory over Baldato and Abdu Japarov completely misread that finish with the uphill top and he's got to be content with third place while this man keeps his leader's pink jersey and his smile gets bigger every day. So Berzan still leading this race by 2 minutes and 16 seconds over De Las Cuevas, Bunyu at 2.38 and that's the way it's been since the time trial at the end of stage 8 and we are now on stage 13. Riders leaving Slovenia today and heading across the borders briefly via Italy but they're finishing in Austria at Lienz which is 204 kilometres. And this little breakaway of 11 formed after around about 70 kilometers. It's thinned out a little bit. Our old favorite, Mario Chiesa, as I told you earlier, always tries but rarely gains. He's in the attack again. And this is Thomas Davy on the third climb of the day. Now looks to be in a little bit of trouble here. He tries to put a brave face on it, but he's losing ground on the breakaway. Well, the main field are over 12 minutes behind, and this is the last of three climbs today. This is the climb of Banberg, which takes us up to 1,268 meters up through the trees. This breakaway, formerly of 11 riders, established itself. Well, there's the confirmation. In fact, it's down slightly, 11 minutes, 50 seconds. 
and the brake going after 70 kilometers. But again, none of the riders are affecting the overall lead of Berzin, and he's going to be very conscious of that right now. This is Michele Bartoli. And there's a point in case, 21 minutes and 45 seconds down, Bartoli. But now he's finding his climbing legs and he sensed the breakaway is very, very tired indeed. They've had a long day out here as we've crossed uh, from Slovenia via Italy into Austria. Just uh, 20 kilometers to go now as Bartoli goes clear. This is the field. We're going back at least 12 minutes to the field. And Berzan just keeping an eye on everybody else. Bunyo in the center of our picture. Max Chiandri also over the head of the field. 13 minutes now, the gap. But this is based on Bartoli, who's got now well clear of the rest of the group, which was absolutely shattered on that climb. And Bartoli is setting himself up here for what would be his best victory that I can ever recall. But he is on form and he's had a good season so far, Bartoli. He had the win in Flesh Brabanson in Belgium and the Grand Prix Pino Cerami. This would be the win he would like to trade for both of those victories in Belgium and he's going to now. 13 and lucky for some as Michele Bartoli comes home alone and that's the way to enjoy your victories in a stage of the Giro d'Italia. Almost six hours in the saddle today. And although it was advertised at 204 kilometers, in fact, it turned out to be 231 kilometers the stage. And the main field, look at this, 13 minutes and 30 seconds back. The remnants of the breakaway in between. Fontanelli taking second. Third place was Flavio Vanzella. Overall, though, still the same and the same names at the top. Austria, well, one rider who was on an American team last year is Max Chiandri. So this morning we asked him what it was like to be back on an Italian team. Well, it's good coming back home, you know, riding for an Italian team. It's uh, sometimes a bit of extra morale, you know, talking, uh, I mean, having some Italian uh, friends also. But uh, I could say I uh, miss a bit also the, the American way of doing things, you know, I mean, like just sometimes taking it easier, a bit more relaxed, you know, I mean. Here it's a bit more stressful environment, I mean, stress, you know, a bit more pressure as a team. But, you know, I mean, I'm still in the cycling business, so it's good. No time to relax today, Max. The hardest, longest stage so far, 235 kilometers, and Pascal Richard and Sergei Uchikov are two riders who launched the attack and have now formed this front group. The champion of Colombia is here as well, Federico Manoz. And there is the route, we're now on the Paso del Herba, and this the third of a tough day of climbing, with still two more to follow. Pascal Richard bringing them up towards the top of the climb, Uchikov of Polti, Bolts is riding extremely good race, and sitting there at the back to Munoz from Colombia. This little group projects itself just ahead of the rest of the breakaway. There goes Girotto. He's gone over the top at round about uh, 10 seconds off the back. And then comes the rem remnants of the leading group here. And now the main field. And there you can see being nursed along, Berzant still in a very good position because Injuane is still there. And so too all of the riders nearest to him. So the attacks have come very, very early on today. They were to be anticipated. In fact, Pascal Richard is now moving smoothly into the leader's jersey in the King of the Mountains competition which so far has been held by Coppolillo all of the way and Coppolillo is in this front group as well but Richard has been snatching the better point score at the top. So coming up now to the top of the Paso del Air brings us up to 2,004 meters and again uh, Richard over the top first followed by Uchakov and looks as though there's a counter-attack underway now. Uh, Claudio Chiapucci also trying to liven the group up a little bit as well. He's over a minute behind Richard and Uchikov at the moment. And this is Coppolillo in the green jersey on the way down. And he's just coming back into contention again. He's having a rough ride today and Pascal Richard is gaining most in this breakaway. the composition of the group and we've got here Augustus Triana and this is the group that's out in front Richard Uchikov, Bolts and Girotto. 
So there are two groups on the road now, 92 kilometers left to go. And still one big climb to come, and that is the climb, in fact, of the Paso di Monte, which takes the riders up to 2,100 meters. Uchikov taking a good look there as he sees the attack coming from Claudio Kierpucci riding his big chain ring, starts to wind it up but very quickly onto his wheel, Uchikov having none of it. And Udo Boltz is up there as well. Now the chase down has begun, the escapees, perhaps the Gavis team have decided they've had long enough out there, now they're going to have to try and pull their man back into the action. 1 minute 26 seconds now, the gap between Berzin and the breakaway, and here we are as we move up to the front now, and in fact that is Kierpucci still trying to stretch here, Kopio, and also Uchakov. So Kopio, who has for a long time led the King of the Mountains competition under pressure today, uh, not least from Pascal Richard as well. But here he is, El Diablo himself, Claudio Kierpucci, taking strength perhaps from the fact that Miguel Injuen is not riding his usual Giro d'Italia, though in fairness neither is Chiapucci. He's also had had his uh, few moments of inglorious on this race. And let's go and have a look at the damage here because the rider at the front is Pascal Richard trying to ride away with this stage. He's had a marvellous day out today, Pascal Richard. He's been scoring all of the points. He's still searching for the best part of nine minutes. And now he's got 25 seconds on Kierpucci and a minute and 35 on the race leader. Well, Pascal Richard has had a marvellous season. He won the fifth stage of Paris-Nice, he won the Grand Prix Gippingham, and he's won the Tour of Romandy. And now he looks like winning at least the King of the Mountains as the rain starts to fall here in the Tour of Italy. Well, this is the climb of the Monte Giovo, and it comes at kilometre 193, and we're two kilometres from the summit now, although we're looking at Chiapucci. In fact, I can tell you that uh, Pantani and Buena Hura, we saw Buena Hura go, and those two are ahead of Chiapucci. As we now go up towards the summit, and the man still out in front and looking over his shoulder is Pascal Richard. This is the chase by Keir Pucci, but clearly he is falling back now into the group containing the pink jersey of Evgeny Berzim. And over the top of the climb, and more King of the Mountains points in the bag. In the chilling rain now goes the Swiss rider Pascal Richard, former champion of Switzerland. And this is Herman of Buena Hora. And also Marco Pantani has got up here now, so we've got three new leaders. And the chase group behind trying to reorganize itself. This has been a real battle through the Dolomites today. And one of the riders taking an advantage near the end, uh, only been a professional for about two years, Marco Pantani, flying 10th, 6 minutes 28 seconds down. But he really is a great climber. We've never had the opportunity to see much of him before. He's won the amateur tour of Italy. This is the composition of the group that's chasing. And I note that Buena Hora is also down there. Jenny Bugno is still here in this group. Now there's the latest information, Pantani has got away from Pascal Richard by half a minute, that was off our cameras, a minute five is the chase group, here is Richard now in a little bit of trouble, he's been on his own for a lot of the day but now he's not leading this race on the road, Pantani has dropped him, and here is Marco Pantani, 24 years of age, he always had a great reputation in the amateur Giro d'Italia, he had a first, uh, in fact, just before he turned professional in 1992, he won that race. But he's never won a race as a professional yet. But they always say you need two years to settle in, and it looks as though Palti now trying to bring this race back under control. Marco Pantani, beginning to feel now that it might be his big moment. He was riding a very solid Tour of Italy last year when it all went wrong for him, and he pulled out very near the end. I think it was the 18th stage indeed when he abandoned. A long, long day in the saddle a day, 235 kilometers. Look at the clock now because Marco Pantani is going to get his first victory as a professional. And it's always the nicest, you know. But this is the spin for second place, and it's some 40 seconds behind. And Bunya is going to take this. Kierpucci's come over, Miguel Indurain, and David Rebolan is also getting mixed up in it. Bunya gets it. Kierpucci will take second place, but Kierpucci's teammate Pantani will remember the day. So too will Pascal Richard here, because he's now the leader of this race in the King of the Mountains competition. And that's what the legs look like of Pascal Richard on the effort today. 
and there's the reward standing on either side of him. Marco Pantani, two years a pro, now a winner as well, and the man in pink holds it. Evgeny Berzan is still the leader after his first real test. Pantani won the day, 42nd ahead of some big names there. But what they did there, they will have to do again on the 15th stage of 195 kilometres. I'm here at the feeding station just after the Col de Stelvio or the Cima Coppi, the highest point of this year's Tour of Italy. Now it might look like a very nice day down here, but at the top it's minus three degrees Celsius and it's starting to snow. There have been little flurries all morning, which is why when the riders come down to here, with the different changes in climatic conditions, they have to keep their strength up, they have to eat. Nobody wants to miss his bag. With the Col de Motorilla coming up very soon, the riders will be very careful coming through here not to make a mistake that could cost them dearly later in the stage and the weather has turned against the race. This is the scene on the top of the high spot of this year's race at 2,000, almost 2,800 metres. It's caused some consternation because there's been discussion about not sending first of all the race, then the cars over the top, but all is well. The riders are now heading up towards the climb and the feeling is that the weather will change as the riders get up there. Well, let's hope it's for the better. This is now the remnants of the main peloton and again an attack has come very early on this time by the climber Franco Vona he's a minute and 50 seconds ahead and there he is lying 27th overall in the race and Franco Vona perhaps made his name a couple of years ago when on successive days in the Alps he twice uh, took uh, second place over the Alps but never got the win well now he's reaching the snow line but the weather has improved quite a lot up here and that's what you expect at this time of the year in June because you don't expect the snow to stay around too long but the temperature has dropped quite alarmingly. The arm warmers and the gloves being put on here by Moreno Argentin. Also the same can be said of the pink jersey behind him, his teammate and leader now, Evgeny Berzin. And these are not the conditions the riders expect in the Tour of Italy but one has to say that at this stage on the mountains they're not uncommon either. And just look at these scenes now as Franco Bona makes his way towards the top of the highest point of this year's race. And the Fausto Coppi Special Prime as well will fall his way, that great Italian Campionissimo. Well, cold it may be, snowy it may be, but it doesn't, de doesn't uh, deter the crowds one bit in coming out to see their heroes. Terrific performance by Franco Bona. He broke away very early on. He figured that maybe they wouldn't watch him too closely because from the bottom, uh, where the race started to the top on this long stage of 195 kilometers, is about 80 kilometers up to the climb. So over the top and uh, 122 kilometers still to go. It's a tough order for Franco Bona, but we'll see how it goes. He's got two more mountains in the Dolomites to pass before he finally starts the long descent. The rider chasing there is Joris Totschnik, the great Austrian climber, finally turning pro this year. Brilliant amateur on the Palti team. And that was Sergei Uchakov. And you can see Andy Hampson, the previous winner of the Tour of Italy, the first American to ever win it. In fact, the only American, just off our picture now. And we haven't seen too much of Andy in this race. Now we're on the descent and racing back down to the sun for the moment at least. Franco Vona still looking for about 20 minutes of his 21 minute deficit. And take it easy on those left hand corners. It's a long way down off the side. 1 minute 45 seconds now back to Tochnik and Rodriguez. That's Nelson Rodriguez, the little Colombian climber, also launching an attack. 3.48 to Kierpucci, Kirato, Bontempi and Alvaro Mejia. Colombian member of the Motorola squad, who again has not had a great race so far. The Italians, as always, enjoying the Tour of Italy and vastly outnumbering the rest of the foreign competition in this event. Well, that's Mejia going down the bunch, which is clearly spreading now and getting a little bit bigger. Bo um, Nelson Rodriguez, the other rider coming in on the screen, and that's Peter Ulgrimov. Second last year, we haven't seen hardly anything of Ugamov. He's played the faithful teammate ever since that early attack he had way out at the beginning of this race when he lost the stage to Moreno Argentin. And they're all around Berzin now. Gavis, they know so much about team racing. A new team there may be, but those jerseys are on old shoulders. Voltolina, 66 kilometers to go. 
still the lone leader. Hugo Boltz, a little bit of a surprise here, but riding very well for the German telecom team. He's up in that chase group of two now. Jan Ries leading the counter move there. And now this is Berzan, very narrow roads here. Pantani's back in the action again, and that's interesting. He won yesterday and clearly has not suffered at all in the Dolomites. Both Gilotto and Roberto Conti. And it looks as though, in fact, Yvonne Berzin is in a little bit of trouble here. He's been detached the first time we've seen the Russian rider in trouble, and it's come in the mountains. And there's no sign of Miguel Indurain to do any damage here. Indurain is gambling on one assault in the Alps. That's all that can be left for him now, because Marco Pantani, again, this superb 24-year-old climber, his balding head really gives the impression he's a man in his early 30s or late 20s but indeed he's only two years a pro and he's now got rid of the pink jersey of this race a very solid leader too in Evgeny Berzin and Indurain is up on the right of our picture with Berzin Pantani has got through to the leading group Girotto is trying to grab his wheel well this is a marvellous performance it's a long long time since we've seen a great climber come into the sport of cycling and it looks now as though Pantani might be able to do something yet again. Franco Bona is coming up towards the top of the last climb. But clearly struggling as now up behind him and taking with him Nelson Rodriguez is Marco Pantani. And Pantani clearly is appetite is whetted now by the victory yesterday in the Dolomites. He's going to have another good day today if he gets his way. Franco Vola is totally sold. He looks across. He checks out who they are. He cannot do a thing about it. Well, you have to feel sorry for him, but he's had a good day and he won't go home without any money for the prizes won in the Dolomites. But now look at the scenes here as well. Well, Berzan will not be asking for these pushes, and indeed there'll be a small penalty. Oh, and look at this, the road is completely blocked. And Berzin having to go round the outside of the cars. Well, whenever you run a race of this stature over a road as narrow as this, you're always going to get problems like that. Potentially, it is inviting danger. Over the top of the climb, Pantani is gone. He's managed to get about 10 seconds into Nelson Rodriguez. And this is going to be a very, very dicey descent. No protection, as you can see, on the right of the road. The only good news is the weather is now great. Heading down towards Africa. Still coming over the top of the climb. Has a long split on here now. Indurain over in fifth position. Berzan, he has a few seconds on Berzan. Can he be for the first time? He's going to take time back off the little Russian. Now there's a new name to talk about in this year's Giro d'Italia, that of Marco Pantani. Uh, Miguel Indurain, we've seen nothing of him this year. It's almost as if he's come to this tour below form and he's now trying to get back on terms. For the first time, Indurain is being drawn into the attack in the mountains rather than block because he's not the leader of a race, a major race, since 1991 at this stage. Marco Pantani, the newcomer, the old hand Miguel Indurain. The chase is on. Well, it's a big step from the small, what they call the baby Giro, the amateur Giro d'Italia, to the big one, but Pantani now seems to have made it very successful. Successfully, although in fact he's now being joined. It looks as though Indurain has got a cross to him. Well, this is going to send shivers down Pantani's spine when he sees who's about to join him. There's Pantani's overall situation, 17 minutes and more back. And Miguel Indurain, sorry about the little bit of picture break of your experiencing, but these pictures are coming live from the helicopters out on the course. And Indurain goes through, but Pantani has something left. Pantani's lifted his pace there. He's got Nelson Rodriguez is the man in the middle. You can only just see him. They don't call him Big Mig for nothing. And the petit, uh, petit uh, Nelson Rodriguez is the smallest man in the race and a great climber. So Miguel Indurain, for the first time in this year's Giro, has hit the front and he's hit it well. He's climbed. This has caused consternation because now Berzan is trying to recover from his bad climb and get back on terms. And he's joined at the back here by Ivan Gotti again from Balti. 
bit of a surprise, uh, Gotti getting up at this stage of the race to this quality of group. But if this continues, there will be a change overall tonight because, in fact, Gianni Bugno is in a spot of bother here. He's in a group containing Pascal Richard and Pavel Tonkov. And I would say they're over a couple of minutes down on this climb now. He's going to have to work very hard. And there we are, 1.30 is the gap to the pink jersey. 2.25, the gap to uh, Gianni Bugno. And Bugno having to stop his team car there and wants a word with them to know exactly what's going on. But we can find out because Pantani is setting the pace. He hasn't been deterred at all by the arrival of Miguel Indurain. And Rodriguez is the man who is often content to follow but very rarely puts in the work rate at the front. And that is the chase trying to bridge up to these three. And for the first time in this race, we're now seeing Miguel Indurain trying to take time out of the race leader. So perhaps Indurain is riding himself now into this year of Italia. If he wins it from this point onwards, it will be a great, great victory for him. And of course, his third straight. So, Miguel Indurain receiving the cheers, but I bet most of them being directed at the man who's setting the pace, Marco Pantani. A pure climber, plain and simple, and yesterday he won his first race as a professional. Indurain doing his shirt turn at the front now, under the start-finish banner, but there's still another circuit to come. This is the chase group, led by Berzin, followed by Udo Volz, Claudio Chiapucci in this group. And look at the gap, two minutes and two seconds, an awful lot of ground to make up. Miguel Indurain is coming back into this race for sure. And Bunyo wants others to come and help here. He wants to talk to his teammate and doesn't want anybody to interfere with that. But the gap is enormous, 4 minutes 31 seconds and Bunyo is sliding away from being a challenger in this year's Giro d'Italia. Pantani, Rodriguez, Indurain, but that's not the order we see them on the screen. It is Indurain, Pantani, Rodriguez as they make the climb. And look at this graphic, in fact they're saying Pantani 43 seconds ahead of Indurain. Well, the Italian cameras amazingly didn't show us this, but there he was climbing alone. And this is now Berzan, who's trying to close the gap down on Indurain and Rodriguez. So Indurain must have cracked on the climb, and that has got to be a surprise and yet another indication that indeed Indurain is not having a great Giro because we're now in the last kilometre of the race and for the second day in succession we're looking at the same man Marco Pantani this time heading for not a 40 second victory like he had over Bunyo yesterday and Bunyo over four minutes behind as far as we know right now but indeed he's going to be two or three minutes ahead of the race Tremendous piece of riding, and you know Pantani could even be up into second place overall tonight. This is a dramatic change in the overall classification. It's whether Berzan can hold on to his lead right now. So, another day, another enormously long day of almost seven hours, but Pantani won't mind. He showed us today that he is a real rider of the future. However, his Giro d'Italia this year ends up. Second win in a row for him. And again, a little bit of picture breakup, but we're watching uh, big pictures of a man for the future. I'm sure about that. And look at this, Claudio Chiapucci comes in, but look at the time gap. The teammate of Pantani, almost three minutes behind. And this is the sprint, and Vladimir Belli is taking on little Nelson Rodriguez, and they're tailing off Miguel Indurain. That says it all, doesn't it? Miguel Indurain lost over three minutes to Pantani on that last circuit. And also a huge time gap back to Evgeny Berzan, four minutes and six seconds. So he loses, in fact, 36 seconds to Miguel Indurain. And Gianni Bugno, almost six minutes behind. The Dolomites cracked their men in the end. But they didn't crack this one. Marco Pantani for the second day. What a weekend for him. I'm not surprised he's happy about this, the Carrera rider having given up on the 18th stage a year ago in his first Giro d'Italia is now heading towards the top he certainly won the stage at 2 minutes 52 seconds ahead of Chiapucci, Belli, Rodriguez but overall now look at it Pantani up to second a minute and 18 seconds off the lead Indurain is now third the big guns are firing but if your name is Miguel Indurain well some would say they're only blanks the 16th stage 220 kilometers and this is by the way the overall classification in the King of the Mountains only three points in it Copper Leo ahead uh, behind behind rather of Miguel Indurain. There's the man that lost the time yesterday, shaking his head yet again. 
He always seems to have just one bad day. But this rider may have had a slightly bad day yesterday, Berzan, but it certainly didn't cost him the overall lead. He's still a solid leader, and there's only two more big days in the mountains to come, and they'll be in the French and Italian Alps. Miguel Indurain there, these are the stars who have made the running through the Dolomites. Indurain has still not showed us just how good he is, and maybe his form will come in the last week of the race. This is 220 kilometers a day, we're on the way to Stadella from Sondrio. No real big challenge for the riders, and I would think after the battering in the Dolomites, they're going to be rather pleased with just uh, riding along. Well, having said that, a small breakaway has got away here, and it might well decide the day. The rider at the front of this group is Michele Bartoli, who's having a very good season. And also riding close up there again, Claudio Chiapucci, who never knows when to say no. Riders coming down towards the finish this time. And the main field passing through, they're on the circuit now. 14 seconds is the gap, and surely that's not going to hold out. Eight kilometers are on the second circuit. And this is a beautiful little circuit around the back of Stradello here. And the weather is wonderfully warm again. The green jersey there, Pascal Richard. But they haven't survived, the field is all together. And inside the final kilometre, the sprinters will get their chance once more. Or will they? Because this is Max Chandri on the left of our picture. Fontanelli looking over his shoulder. And I think that's Zaina who's just tagged in the back. And the Palti boys are trying to drag their man Abdu Jafarov back into this race as the finishing line approaches and Shandri's gone for it. He's only had one win this season. Will it be number two? Yes, I think it is. He's just ahead of Fabiano Fontanelli and the third will be Franco Zaina. And it's a really close thing here. Right on the line, Fontanelli almost stole the day. 17 stage now and kilometres, 200 kilometres. The riders go on to Lavagna. And uh, towards the end, the hills are coming once again. Only two climbs of note, and they're all in the last half of the field. The start this morning from Santa Maria La Versa. And once more, the clouds are just wisps as they fly over the top of Italy, and the scenery, as always in this beautiful country, is stunning. Well, yesterday, Max Chiandri, born in England, he won the stage. He's now Italian. I wonder how it feels. It feels good, obviously, you know. Uh... You have ups and downs, and yesterday was uh, was an up. Uh, I'm really glad because uh, I needed it for myself. I needed it for the team. So now I got one. I'm looking already for another one. Could be today. Could be in a couple of days. Well, maybe we should try for today, Max. It's not too hilly at all. This is the bike of Claudio Chiapucci. There he is, and here is Gianni Brugno, no longer a contender for the final pink jersey in this year's race. Former winner of the Tour of Italy. And the year he won that, it sent him to number one in the world rankings as well. And there's some interesting riders in this attack today, even though they won't challenge for the overall lead. And look at the man setting the pace as Jamaluddin Abdu Japarov in the blue leader as best sprinter. And sitting on his wheel, the man who always pushes him hard in the sprints, Jan Zurada. Well, Panyin has his hand up there. And Perini is also in this breakaway. And there's still 25 and a half kilometers to go. The group is building all the time. And this is the most interesting attack today because, in fact, they've outwitted the men at the head of the classification, Franco Coccioli, setting the pace. And there's the situation now. Two minutes, five seconds, the gap between the two leading groups. Still a lot of thought being put in. In fact, that's Giovanni Lombardi who's now going to try and strike for home. Zerada looks across and sees his teammate go and of course offers no resistance to that. Abdu Japarov rightly marking Zerada because he's the big sprinter who will push Abdu all the way. He hasn't reacted and Lombardi has his gap. Almost two and a half hours down overall. It's for the stage win only, that's for certain. And Giovanni Lombardi I once saw him ride a criterium in a place called Grafton in, on the east coast of Australia where the judges disqualified him for bad sprinting. Well, he'll have no problems if it comes down to a finish right now. Now, Abdu Japarov, after having made a right move to get into the attack, and it's worked as they brought him back. So Abdu lives to fight again here now as, as Verada goes forward. And Perini looks over his shoulder. 
to see if anybody else wants to come and do the work. He's the least likely to win. Panyan is there as well. Now we're looking down the beautiful finish line here of Lavagna. There's Panyan, Perini, and now it's Verada who's gone with three kilometers to go. This is most interesting, a sprinter deciding he'll go for the long one. And again, Abdul Japarov is left in a little bit of confusion now because that's the rider he's been marking. And nobody's going to carry the race across to him, taking Abdul Abdu with them, because what's the point? He'll win the sprint anyway. Lombardi having to dig deep after his attack, hanging on the back now as Verada goes for it. Former third place finish in the British Milk Race overall. And of course, a winner of the famous peace race when he was an amateur. Now he's trying to run away with his second stage victory here in the Giro d'Italia. Abdu's having to come after him. Look at the speed of Abdu, but it's all too late. This has been a superb finish by Zverada. That's the way to do it when they think you're a sprinter. Go and beat them at their own game. And just look at this. They made Abdu do all of the work. So it looks like Lombardi's going to make it a Lamprey 1 2. So Zverada, Lamprey, Abdu gets only third. Well, that is an amazing result of the stage. And there's the confirmation, Panion fourth, Perini and Spruck coming in with the best of the rest of 56 seconds. Overall, Pantani retains second place, Injure in third and Bunyo is in fourth, four minutes, eight seconds back. So to the 18th stage, a 35 kilometers and this the important mountain time trial. Now, what about the progress of Miguel Ingerain? Can he continue now to worry uh, Evgeny Berzin? And indeed, what about this man, Marco Pantani? <laughs> He's become quite a star in just a couple of days in the Dolomites. He is now riding in second place overall. The arrival two of number one, Big Mig who will go out of the start house third from the end in this mountain time trial, which climbs the Paso del Boco. And the young man who has protected that lead along with the help of a very strong team for almost two weeks. Now we'll know the answer by the end, whether indeed Indurain will remain a challenger going in to the Alps. Two tough days ahead, don't forget. Pantani, he will love the two days to come. I'm not too sure whether he liked the time trial too much. He lost six minutes uh, to this man in the first big time trial of this tour. But he cancelled all of that out in the Dolomites. Well, nearly all of it, all by a minute and 18 seconds anyway. Now, De Las Cuevas has gone through a man we've almost forgotten about. We haven't seen him since the last time trial. And just look at this again, Indurain. He's inside, inside De Las Cuevas, so you know Indurain is coming back to form in this year of Italia. Pantani is not enjoying his ride, the computer's counting him down, we're looking at Evgeny Berzan now, and Berzan again doing the ride of his life, and he's up on all of them. Well, Berzan surely now is setting course to win the Giro d'Italia, even if we do have two big mountain stages to come, because this is a mountain time trial. Berzan is on the climb of Del Boco. Pantani is there as well, Indurain likely to come in with the best time before Berzan because he's clear of everybody else but Berzan remains the gadfly to him now but this is a different Indurain to the opening week he has steadily ridden himself into this Giro d'Italia Pantani he has been the star for my book we found at last a man who can climb mountains a pure climber now, De Las Cuevas still holding best time. Indurain has gone ahead of that. Berzan receiving the pats from the crowd because, by the way, this man speaks fluent Italian and they see him as one of them. Pantani comes up to the finish. This is a good ride for him, a lot closer. Look at that, so much closer than he's been in the past. He's not conceded much time. There's still hope for him in the final round in the Alps. Now Berzan, through every time check today, has been ahead and he's still inside the hour for the 35 kilometers. And I think he's going to cross the line as the only man inside the hour as well. He's almost there. He's again beaten Miguel Indurain, but not by the same margin. This time by barely 20 seconds. But Berzan increases his overall lead in the Giro d'Italia. And you know the way the other two are coming to form, he might need that. There's the result of the time trial stage. Indurain 20 seconds back. Pantani a minute 37. De Las Cuevas no longer a contender, finishing in fourth place. And now, the smiles on the face of Evgeny Berzan, but look at the smiles that weren't, uh, not on the face rather there, of Gianni Bagno. But he should be getting lighter at least now for the lift because he's losing weight. 
So the race goes on the 19th stage now, taking us from Lavagna to Bra, 212 kilometers, just the one hill at the beginning, but basically it shouldn't pose too many difficulties, and it really isn't the day for the riders now to think of attacking the man from the Gavis team. Andy, that was a pretty tough time trial yesterday, but you must be quite pleased with your performance. I was, I was happy the day before, uh, actually the two days since uh, our hard mountain stages, I've had terrible legs. I've you know, been suffering and trying to recuperate and uh, bounced back for the time trial. I did a good steady performance, you know, I didn't uh, set the world on fire, but held my position. But more importantly, it's a good sign since I could really push my body hard here in the third week that uh, going into the last two mountain stages, I think I'll be able to have the strength to go on some breaks and try to find a good race. Andy Hampson there with Paul Sherry. Now let's find out what Paul thought of the time trial. Well, what a time trial that was yesterday. Berzin again coming out on top. I had a feeling that Miguel Indurain might have come back and turned the tables, but the overall leaderboard still the same as it was yesterday. First Berzin, second Pantani, and third Miguel Indurain. Well, there are a couple of things that Miguel Indurain doesn't like. One of those is getting beaten, especially in this year's Tour of Italy. But another thing is the rain. He hates the rain and doesn't handle it very well. Over the next couple of days, we're going to go into the mountains. That's where he has to try for the last time to win the Tour of Italy. If the rain stays like this, it could be the end of the Tour of Italy for Miguel Indurain. Let's see what happens. And let's do just that, Paul. Four days to go. This one is fairly flat. Then we've got the two days in the French and Italian Alps. Then we finish on the flat road up to the line in Milan. Last chance, well, near the last chance anyway, for the opportunists rather than the sprinters to get away. And we've got Potenzana, the Italian champion, sitting at the back of this breakaway with my favourite, Massimo Girotto, in here. Such an aggressive rider, always looking for a good attack that might carry him away. Rolf Sorensen sitting at the rear of the group, and there's a rider bringing himself now back into form. They're on the attack, and it could well stay away, that breakaway, because the main field are a little bit tired and they're not going to want to expend too much energy with tomorrow's stage going to Les Deux Alpes in France. Well, as I said that, one rider decides he does want to see some life out of this main field, but there's something like two minutes behind that breakaway of four riders. The other man in that group is Rodolfo Massi. There's Sorensen, and his hair cut just before the start of the Giro d'Italia. And there is Roscioli, was the rider who attacked and has got himself now in no man's land. And I'm not so sure that's a wise move. He won the stage of the Tour de France last year and he's been a different rider since. And Rolf Sorensen now trying to tame the attack here of the champion of Italy. Podenzana as we get into the streets here in the town of Bra. But Padenzana, I think, has gone too early. The champion of Italy is still looking for that elusive stage win here in the Giro d'Italia, but he's inside the last kilometre, an awful long way still to go. And Girotto is just at the back of this group now. Massi is the rider at the back. Sorensen is in second place, keeping an eye out. I think he will show a lot of respect to Girotto, but he wasn't watching him. Girotto has swung to the right. He's not a great sprinter, but he can produce a fast finish when he requires it. And in fact, it was a dummy. Girotto has sat up, Sorensen has got his wheel. Now, Potenzana, can he go again? Because sitting at the back here is Massi, Rodolfo Massi. And I'm not too sure whether he's got too much left in this company. But now they've got Girotto on the front and nobody wants to take that position until they see the finish line, which is just up there now. Girotto's gone now, really. Sorensen needs to come to the left of the picture, I think, and avoid the barriers. He's going to try and go to the inside. He hasn't got it. And in fact, Girotto gets it clearly from Sorensen, Padenzana and Rodolfo Massi. This is the spin for fifth place over two minutes later. And that's uh, Fonantiari who's brought the race in. First time we've heard of him since the race began almost three weeks ago. But there's the victory margin in the end as Girotto deserved that one. He's won a couple of stages in the Tour de France. They're given the chance and he'll always take it. And so Massimo Girotto, the winner ahead of Sorensen and Potenzana, but now the riders face the big climbs in the French Alps, four in fact on 206 kilometres. Let's join Paul Sherwin on top of one of them.
Well, here we are at the top of the Col de Langello, the toughest climb of the day today, 2,748 metres. The Tour of Italy has to be decided in the next two days here. Miguel Indurain, if he wants to take his third straight win in the Giro d'Italia, must attack. Eugenie Berzin has looked very comfortable, but these are the climbs that will suit Miguel Indurain, their power climbs. He has to make his move. The riders are already on the slopes of the climb here. Attacks are coming thick and fast. Let's get straight into the action and see if Indurain can take it. Well, a little bit of a surprise right out of the beginning because down there on the climb of the Angelo is Abdu Japarov among this leading group of some seven riders. Buena Herrera is setting the pace and you can see Alvaro Mejia from Colombia on the right-hand side of the road as we look down there. A little figure of Abdu Japarov. There's six riders down there and one just, uh, just behind them. And the long look down, the last of the summer snows here, the winter snows going away as summer dawns. And Pantani, there's no holding this man now, his tail is so high. There's Abdu Japarov and Santa Ramita, Zanini, and Davi, Thomas Davi that is, from France, from Castorama, Arietta. There are the leaders in this front group. Some good climbers here, but well, I must say that uh, Abdu Japarov is not one of them. And now the Gavis team is trying to keep their man in the thick of the action. He's riding well. On the wheel of him is Kierpucci. And just behind Kierpucci there, Miguel Indurain. Time running out indeed for Miguel Indurain. And also for this man who is riding so well, Pantani. Now you just give him wings when you bring him into the mountains. He's ridden right up to the group. Thomas Divi gets out of the saddle but can't do much about it as Pantani goes to the front. And in fact, it's Herman of Buenahora who actually tries to take his wheel. He has a fearsome acceleration on the slopes, uh, Marco Pantani. What a superb climber. Mechia feels he might have the strength today. He's come across the gap. Three very, very good climbers now at the front. And we're 95 kilometers from the finish, but there are still the two nasty little climbs to come. Mereno Argentin, the strong man of the Gavis team. He may have lost his brief lead in this race but he's been a tower of strength for the leader Berzin is Buenahora and Pantani Pantani makes climbing look easy he makes us all think we can do it very select chase group developing now as we head off into France and the cheers of the crowd here Pantani Buenahora they've built themselves more than a minute now over the chase group but not in the Tour of Italy, the Col d'Isoire, a famous climb, of course, in the Tour de France. And you look at it go over it sometimes at this time of the year. But the first man over the top is Pantani. And right behind him and clinging on for dear life, Buenahola. And now third over the top, Alvaro Mejia. Minute and 21 seconds down. He's the select little group. Argentin doing a great piece of pacemaking on the front for as long as he can for Berzin. Then comes Indurain. Behind Indurain, Nelson Rodriguez, Claudio Chiapucci. I think Roberto Conti is also in this group. And the time gap is going to be around a minute and 50 seconds down now on the two leaders. So Pantani is the new leader of this race, on the road at least. And the work is going to have to be done now by the Gavis team if they're going to give the jersey back to Berzin by the end of the day. Now this is often the side of the Iswar that the riders come up, it's very, very steep, it's also a very difficult descent, it twists and turns all of the way down. Running out of the valley now, Pantani once more has thrown down the gauntlet to some of the best bike riders in the world and here he is. No doubt uh, delighted with the fact that Buenahora is with him, because that's a chance for a breather. Once you draft, of course, they reckon you save around about 30% of your energy. Heading off into Briançon. And 63 kilometers left to go at the very last minute. And the trouble there for Indurain. A brief bike change, I think it was. It might have been a wheel change, but either way, Indurain is back in the saddle. And the gap to the Jersey group, which Indurain has just punctured from, uh, 1 minute 15 seconds. So they're closing in. The gap is coming down. You see, we're back on the flattish roads where Pantani isn't such a great rider yet. 
and in fact Gunahora has gone. Now I'm wondering if somebody has told uh, Pantani to wait because wait he has and he's allowed Gwenohora to go for it by himself but he has waited for this chase group and this is an incredible ride by Jamaluddin and Abdu Japarov. What a superb piece of riding for this man we only ever see as a sprinter. Although he's done some very good rides in the peace race over the years on the general classification. The peace race, even though it was the toughest amateur race in the world, is a long way from the Tour of Italy at this stage of the game. With another mountain stage to come tomorrow, and now we have a Potenzana having another dig. He tries every day, and he's never had the fruits of reward yet for his work. Doesn't seem to ride with a lot of intelligence, quite frankly, because he seems to always, at least when our cameras look at him, he's sitting at the front making the pace, and everybody is watching him. Now, I guess that Buenohora is gambling that he won't be seen as a popular contender. There's Andy Hampston, a popular contender by that, I mean, for overall victory and that he might let him go. Arjun Tim will be relieved that his chase back has had its result in bringing back into the fold Pantani. And Abdul Japarov, a remarkable ride by him today. Roberto Conti, number 94, but they're all having to hunt down this man who's taken his chance for the Kelme team. They've had a victory, don't forget, with Lordolino Cubino. Andy Hampson working hard now. And looking for a stage win as some consolation here in the Alps. He's won here before, of course, in the opposite valley on the climb of Alpe d'Huez in the Tour de France. And the next stop before the finishing ride will be the Col de Lotere top of that we'll go through the 171 kilometer point and Indurain well to me doesn't look terribly terribly happy he's riding on the wheel of Moreno Argentin he's still got to work out how he's going to get rid of not just uh, Berzin but everybody else from the Gavis team and it may have been a minute but in fact the leaders have swept up Buenohora because he's now at the back of this group as they come to the summit of the Col de Lotere and as they come up towards the top, it is Bodenzana, the champion of Italy, first over from Roberto Conti and Vladimir Pulnikov going over in third place. And this is the group containing the race leader, Berzan, Miguel Indurain, and they're over a couple of minutes down that front group at the minute. But they won't be overly concerned by that. There's Buenohora now, tacked onto the back of this group as they start the descent down to the valley, and then they climb up they does all to the finish. So Pantani made the best move in the end to go back to the group. And Bunyo, can you believe this? 11 minutes, 11 and a half minutes, albeit over the top of the lottery. And when Bunyo cracks, he cracks in a big way. And there's Bodenzana taking a drink. Roberto Conti is here. Tacked on the back of this group is Alvaro Mejia. And this is the group containing Evgeny Berzen. Well, it's been an excellent day of attacking racing, but it hasn't come from Miguel Indurain at all, that's for sure. There you have Claudio Chiapucci and the other little rider here, Ivan Gotti, turning out to be quite a fine on the Palti team. Abdu Japarov continuing his great day alongside Berza. And the rider doing all of the work, the really the strong man of the Gavis team today is Moreno Argentin. And the gap is now up to almost three minutes on that lead group. managing to keep the race leaders under control but only just this has become a battle of more of a war of attrition I think because this is Pulnikov now having a dig and the Carrera team having a great Giro Pulnikov goes or Roberto Conti tries to grab his wheel Podenzana I think tried and not too sure whether he's got the strength or not back there but he's coming now so Vladimir Pulnikov is launching the attack as we start the climb up to the finish at Les Deux Alpes so again, the stage has come down to a battle over the final mountain, and that's not going to take the jersey away from Evgeny Berzin. It's a long, long acceleration by Pulnikov, and Conti is just about holding him in his sights. 
Mechiel is on the left, and this uh, the second group on the road now with the pink jersey. And in fact, Mechiel has cracked and gone. The other rider in this group here is Bantani. So we now are seeing the top three riders in this year's Year of Italia locked together. They're going to go up this mountain and watch each other. Injurain is going to test Berzain to the full wall. What did I say that for? Because in fact, Berzain is going to test Injurain. And a nice piece of acceleration by Injurain. And he is coming strong again, you know. The way he accelerated then, never altered position. And then went across to Berzain. And they've got Pantani in a little bit of trouble, I think. He didn't like that acceleration by the young Russian rider. But that was almost a little uh, letter to Injurain saying, I'm still going great, thanks a lot. And the rider who's just climbed back up into the picture here, our old friend Franco Vona, who always rides well in the mountains. And up towards the front now, Fardenzana, Pulnikov, Nelson Rodriguez, Roberto Conti, they're the riders, so we've got the leaders on the left, and the chases are getting a little bit bigger again now because Gotti's come back also. And Injurain is setting the pace. And you see Berzan there using a slightly lower gear than Injurain on the climb. But looking at this front shot, no sign of pain on either face, so I guess they're both enjoying the ride and they're probably wishing it was over. This will be the psychological stage, I think, for Berzan. If he can just get through this one, he's going to feel he may well have this tour won, although I doubt whether he'll say it. Indurain, he's tried to fire a little bit today, but you know, at the end of the day, he's been controlled by the Russian. A marvellous piece of race riding done by Moreno Argentin, and now Argentin has dropped out because the big hitters have taken over, but Berzan has been left with enough energy to cope with Miguel Indurain. At least that's the way it looks as we approach the top of this climb. Pantani wearing his hat today in third place. He's up in second place overall and not going to give Indurain any movement at all. Well, it must feel very strange to Miguel not wearing a leader's jersey at this stage of a big tour, having won the Tour of Italy for the last two years and the Tour de France for the past three. He'll try for a fourth straight in three weeks' time. Moto 1 indicating the leading group for those the legs of Pulnikov. And Moto 2, and Pulnikov's gone on the left, Pulnikov has gone again, another tremendous acceleration by Pulnikov, and this time he may have caught them just right, because there's no reaction there at all. Podinzana can't go, Conti can't go, and look at that, the distance now by Pulnikov, he started the move, somebody's got up to him, so it must indeed... Uh, it's I, it'll be, um, I think it must be Totsnik, no, it's Nelson Rodriguez, Rodriguez has got across to him. So Nelson Rodriguez has come up to him and is going to be forced to take the lead, I think, he won't like that. He takes a look at Pulnikov, as the chase behind him, are keeping in the picture as well, because the battle for the Giro d'Italia is on the right, the battle for the stage win is at one kilometre on the left. And now Pulnikov goes again now and he should have a better finish than Rodriguez but uh, I'm not so sure at this stage of the race because Rodriguez has answered him, he's got his wheel too. Who's going to come around this corner first now? And in fact through on the inside is Pulnikov but he's fading and Rodriguez is coming quickly and he gets it right on the line. So the Ukrainian takes the victory at 29 years of age, Rodriguez is second. And now the clock starts to count as over the line comes Roberto Conti, still to win a pro race. He gets third place 14 seconds or so back. And the champion of Italy still waiting for his stage win two, Pondenzana, he gets fourth. And now we're going down to the sprint here from the best of the rest. And Miguel Injurain is leading out Marco Pantani and Berzin. And Pantani just taking it on the line. And Andy Hampson, by the way, finished 12th and also moved up. Andy, that was a pretty tough stage for everybody there. You've probably moved up to seventh place overall, but at one time it looked as if you were going to go for the stage victory. Yeah, I was hoping to be going the, for the victory. Uh, you know, it was a pretty good break. Uh, but, uh, you know, I just wasn't strong enough to keep it up at the end. Uh, you know, no excuses, just couldn't do it. 
Well, a great win today for Vladimir Pulnikov, who finished ahead of Rodriguez, uh, injuring with all the other favourites just about two minutes back. Now, this is the overall situation with the last day in the Alps to come. Evgeny Berzan leading Marco Pantani by two minutes, 51 seconds. Injurain is in third place, three minutes, 23 seconds back. Then comes Pavel Tonkov and Claudio Chiapucci. The route today is almost 122 kilometres, and the riders begin by going back over the Col de Lotere, and then they finish with two climbs up Sestria. A tough day, especially with bad weather forecast. Let's go to Paul Sherwin. It's coming up to 1.30 in the afternoon here at Leaders Alp and it's absolutely freezing. Yesterday's stage didn't cause very many changes in the overall standings, but today, with 120 kilometres, the riders go two times up to 2,000 metres. Reports are coming through already that it's snowing in Sestriere. It's going to be the last chance that Miguel Indiren and Marco Pantani can get rid of Berzin. He looks very strong to me, though, but it's going to be a tough stage, especially if the bad weather comes down. It could totally turn this Giro upside down for the last time before we go down into Milan tomorrow. Well, the last time Claudio Chiapucci found his way up to Sestria, it was a great lone victory on the stage of the Tour de France, consoling there Gianni Bugno. This is the battle for the King of the Mountains, two points in it between Richard and Pantani. Capilio, who was the early leader, is now in third place, but a breakaway going early today, and Richard, the man who is causing it, determined to consolidate his lead in the King of the Mountains, and joined in this breakaway now he has with him Gerard Rue, Coppolio, Madwas and Andrea Curato. So it's a good move indeed. Two known climbers in Coppolio and Richard. Curato is having a great season after his fine fourth place in the Tour du Pont in the United States. And I think that's probably known as his best result. Well, none of the riders up front are going to worry over much on this opening climb. The boys in blue, because they're thinking now of just defending their man in pink as long as they can. Richard over the top in the lead and ready for the long descent. And the field going over 50 seconds behind and no sign of an attack from them. Looks a bit chilly on top of the lottery there as they now begin their descent. Well, Sestria is the climb that will frighten them. In itself, it's not a vicious, vicious type of climb, but the weather conditions are reported to be quite bad. And the messages come home very quickly. These riders say, oh dear me, look at these conditions now on top of the climb here, Sestria. Well, this will restrict our coverage, I'm afraid, because our helicopters obviously can't fly. But these are brave people that Tifosi today in Sestria, battling in the snow. This is the breakaway now, Gerard Rue, Pascal Richard, Andrea Carato and Coppolillo as they come up towards the summit and Richard is the man who's been doing all of the work, a worthy winner I think it's safe to say that of the King of the Mountains now. And if anything this has worked in the favour of Evgeny Berzan because nobody's going to attack him, they're all going to think of their skins I think on the descent because not to... This is the first time over the top and they're two and a half minutes down on that breakaway. Rue has been detached, uh, Richard is out in front and in fact according to that caption and we can't prove it, they've split up now on the climb and Pascal Richard is away on his own here and I hope you can see him but there he is, the king of the mountains on the last day in the mountains of Sestria, takes the victory and that will give him the king of the mountains title and it really confirms himself as a great rider this season again former champion of Switzerland. What a shame he's decided not to ride in the upcoming Tour de France. Um, that might be a mistake. And the rest of the race comes in and no real fight in them. The main field coming in over four and a half minutes behind. So in the end, no change overall with just a day to go. Pascal Richard, the winner, and Paul Schoen wishing he wasn't a reporter. What a dramatic stage in the Tour of Italy today. As you can see, we've not been able to bring you too many images of the race, which has been absolutely incredible. Rarely have I seen a day like this in any international bike race. Pascal Richard walked away with it. Not only did he take the King of the Mountains competition, which he also nearly lost yesterday, but he walked away with a stage victory too. Behind, there was no major change. A little bit of a problem for uh, Eugenie Berzin, who had to have a bike change, and he changed his bike with Pierre. Ugramov, but he finished in the main group with Miguel Indurain and Marco Pantani, so there was no change in the overall standings. It looks as if that's going to stay that way until we get down to Milan tomorrow, but what an incredible day's racing we've had here in the Alps. 
Well, that was for those who could see it, of course. And the winner of the day, well, Pascal Richard, and he finished ahead of Gerard Rue, Coppolio, Madwas, and Kirato. Well, Sanson finishing in sixth place. The pink jersey going over an anorak here, Evgeny Berzan. It's a good job they carry large sizes as well, even if they are for little people. And Berzan has matured so well in this year's Giro d'Italia. The last stage, stage 22, 198 kilometres, starts slightly higher than it finishes, but it's flat really all of the way now into the beautiful city of Milano. And I bet the riders are happy with that. Well, let's ask them, starting with Andy Hampson. The last couple of days have been quite tough, Andy. How's it been for you? Uh, it was pretty tough for me. I, you know, I was really keyed up for the first day over the Col d'Agnello, the big stage. Um, I played my cards right. I was struggling on the Agnello. My body's not uh, not quite up to the <clears throat> to the tempo that we had there. But, you know, I used some experience, tongue in tough got over the Isoard okay and started coming around gotten a nice break over the second to last climb it's real windy we're in a little group and it was a little touch and go there for a while but uh yeah, it was good to to be in there and you know be in the right break that was that was going for the win i didn't have it on the last climb and that was a big disappointment for me uh can't say what went wrong so much is uh just have to keep trying some breaks like that and one of them's going to work what do you think about Eugenie Berzin? Because a lot of people thought he might have faltered when we came into the Alps, but yeah, seems he, like a good rider. He certainly didn't. I mean, he's proven how tough he is. He started off with a bang. He started off stronger than anyone else, and his team has also been able to support him all the way to the end. So, uh, hey, hats off. They uh, they put it together. Enderan, I think, is in really good form. It's not that he's been holding back. Um, Pantani rode an extremely aggressive race and has a good second place. So it's it's been an exciting race, you know. It's kind of a three-horse race now, but uh, it's a lot closer than some other years. And I think it's significant that uh, in the future there's going to be instead of one person dominating, there's going to be more of these people coming out of nowhere, if you will, and making a race out of it. Well, Pascal, set in an etap. Well, Pascal, uh, that was a stage which really was for the devil. Uh, have you really stolen it? <laughs> And he said it was it was not easy, but uh, he was real. His real objective of the day was to win the King of the Mountains jersey. The Tour of Italy seems to be getting a lot harder than it used to. What is the difference between the Tour of Italy and the Tour de France? Uh, well, it was a lot of different years ago. Um, the speed wasn't as high uh, through the stages uh, as as it is in the Tour de France, but uh, this year and. Uh, the last couple of years, but especially this year, has been very, very fast from the beginning, and the riders have been very tired here in the last week. And uh, comparing to the tour, I think is this has been a, a tour of Italy as uh, unlevel at the Tour de France. But it was good for you to come in after your injury this year and and still use it as preparation. Yeah, that's very good. It's very important that I had a, had a good. Uh, good uh, what you say base um, to doing the Tour of Italy because it's been so hard so if you haven't got a good uh, base condition it's, it's very difficult to to come through it and be good at the end so I'm very satisfied and uh, looking forward to the Tour. Uh, next year uh, will you also ride the Tour de France? Uh, yes next year I shall start in the Tour of Italy and I'd like to ride also in the Tour de France. <laughs> well that means trouble for someone I think this young find of the year. But he won't be riding alongside his team leader, Moreno Argentin, who also announced his retirement after this year's World Championships. And that will be a sad farewell there. In a few minutes' time, we'll have confirmation that Eugenie Berzin has run out the final overall winner of this year's Giro d'Italia. And what a race it's been. It really has been the revelation of the class of 1970, as they're calling it here. Marco Pantani, another young rider, finished second place overall, just ahead of Miguel Indurain, who was going for three straight victories in this year's Giro, but couldn't make it. Well, before the start of the Tour of Italy, I was convinced that Miguel Indurain was going to get beaten in this year's Tour de France. But as it is, I think after his defeat here, he'll come back and fight a lot stronger and harder in the Tour de France. Well, it's been a great Tour of Italy. I've enjoyed covering it. I hope you've enjoyed it. Next point, the Tour de France. But just before then, the finish here of the Giro d'Italia, the end of the 198-kilometer stage. 
And again, it's the Palti Riders winding it up at the front now to try and bring this race down to a successful end, at least for Jamaluddin Abdu Japarov, who's holding second place and looking for the rest of the sprinters. He's always alert to whatever is around him here. And now he's going to go for the line, but he's being outrun by Zanini, I think. And this is going to be a close one. But in fact, uh, Abdu Japarov is going to have a struggle on his hands. Zanini is holding him off to the line, and Abdu gets only second. I think Robert Pania was third, but look at this. Zanini outwitted him again. And Abdu Japarov will have to be content with only one stage win. And this young man, almost a race-long leader, but not quite. Evgeny Berzin, the first man from a former Eastern Bloc nation to win the Giro d'Italia. He wins by 2 minutes 51 seconds ahead of the real discovery, Marco Pantani, certainly along with Berzin. Miguel Indurain surprisingly beaten. He may take revenge in the Tour de France. And Pavel Tonkov up in the fourth place. Andy Hampston finished 10th. And George Toshnik, watch out for him. He was 13th. One place ahead of Moreno Argentine, riding his last Giro d'Italia. For Paul Sherwin, I'm Phil Liggett saying, until we meet again, goodbye.